Let the dice tell the story. Within the Pyrelands, the Burning Reach is a stretch of water that irrigates these parched lands. A stark contrast to the molten lava that flows beside it. Its life-giving waters not only sustain some of the local denizens, but also brings with it resources and minerals of interest as the waters ebb and flow. A particularly green gemstone has attracted the attention of a band of ratmen. The Skaven have scried that a deposit of their coveted warpstone has found its way into these lands, and they have quickly overrun the land in hopes of securing it. Their movements have not gone unnoticed though, as a large figure watches them scurrying in the valleys below. Skaven. The slaughter priest snarls as he eyes the verminous creatures toiling below his vantage point. Barely worthy of a fight, their craven cowardice is an affront to the god of battle. Kazgrim Bloodspawn spits on the ground in disgust as he looks on. Dozens of furry creatures scamper around, mining for their precious warp stone. In the distance, he could see some of the larger rat folk clad in armor and wielding halberds. Kazgrim had no doubts that these rat skulls would not prove worthy to offer to the skull throne, but despite this, he lifts his great axe high into the air and rouses his waiting warriors. Let their heads roll and blood flow over these lands. Kroak, the Black Ripper, cracks his whip over a handful of slave rats, the quick-witted ones scurrying away before they feel his fury. Quick quicking, yes, yes! He shouts loudly. Or you'll feed the ogres with your flesh meat. An adept commander, he was never one to spare the lash, especially when such an important treasure was at stake. The Grey Seer had foretold of a powerful boon hidden with somewhere in this place. Croak would do anything to further his power and prestige. His retinue of storm vermin stand at guard beside him, their bristling weapons adding more to his dominating presence. His ears perk up and his whiskers twitch as a deep rumbling begins to spread throughout the ground. An acrid stench of blood and ichor permeates around the ratkin, as many of them begin to shake at the palpable sensation of inevitable death. Spikes of bronze protrude from the ground as an icon of corn is raised from the burning soil. Gore-drenched stonework, clad in barbed metalwork, rise to hoist corn's glory high into the sky. Skulls erupt from the ground to elevate this altar of corn, and blood begins to flow from its fount-like centerpiece, drenching the surrounding area in a gore-slick ooze. The earth begins to tremble as a horde of berserk killers amass at the hilltop. Bulky and fiery red, the wrathmongers of the Crimson Haze bathe the area in a feverish lust for battle. A great banner of corn radiated his wrathful presence as the blood's crater channels the power of chaos through his great relic. Another slaughter priest, Kron Gortooth, stands proudly beside him to shout orders to the red tide of blood reavers. The slaughter was ready to begin. Krulk's beady eyes dart around, searching beyond the ensuing chaos, as rats begin to run in every direction, unsure of where the danger was coming from, but knowing full well of its presence. From the crest of a smoking hill, he sees the shadowy figures making a headlong charge down to the mines. A glint of bronze makes Krulk feel a sense of unease as he orders his storm vermin to march slowly forwards. He barks out orders to prepare a unit of storm fiends to intercept the interlopers, and another pair of rat ogres to bolster his flank. A show of force might be enough to dissuade the enemy, at least long enough for his master to intervene. While Krog felt proud of his battle prowess, within him he hoped that the Grey Seer would deal with the brunt of the threat first. Veskit Falfang feels the urgency in the labor camp as rattling scurry every which way. A unit of storm fiends rush ahead of him, and he could smell a lingering tang of blood in the air. He orders his private retinue of storm vermin, the deep slayers of the Pillar City, to surround him as he prepares a spell. He channels arcane energy through his warp stone orb, which bathed the storm fiends in a protective mystic shield before screaming his orders at them. Crush the man things, splat their meat meats, crush their bone meats. Roaring in the acknowledgement, the giant rat fiends burst into an all out charge. They brush by the Skull Altar, and one of them unleashes a gout of green warp fire onto the unsuspecting blood warriors. Their metal armor cooks them alive as their flesh melts away from their charring bones. One of them refuses to let his blood go to waste, and plunges his own gore fist into his neck, letting what little offering he could to his blood god. 
breaking through a section of wall, the storm fiends charge headfirst into the reigning blood warriors and Kazgrim bloodspawn. One of these monstrous creatures bludgeons the slaughter priest, a blow to the head which sends him to his knees. A spray of blood issues from his mouth and nose as he feels the brute force of these mutant creatures. Not one to turn away from battle, he finds his footing and sends a rending cleave with his axe, the gore shovel. It bites deep within the muscular arm of the storm fiend and let out a torrent of blood which pleased the struggling priest. The brass vanguard hold their ground too as the other two giant rats throw themselves into battle. Axes turn away some of the brutal onslaught and gore fists find fleshy weakness to exploit. Another blood warrior has his head crushed by the giant clubbing fists of the storm fiend, but even without his head he swings wildly at his foe with his last ounce of strength. Kron Gortooth whispers a blood blessing upon the red tide blood reavers who eagerly receive it, their eyes glowing red with an unholy fervor. I smell the blood of cowardly sorcery in the air. He shouts to rouse his frenzied fighters. Spill his blood, claim his skull, and corn will witness you. A torrent of fleshy bodies scream down the hill as they rush with reckless abandon towards their quarry. Kron smiles as he begins to speak another prayer, only to have a bolt of crimson lightning strike him, sending a jolt of pain coursing through his body. He understood his punishment well. One must not ask so much of the blood god without offering a suitable tithe. Blood pours all around Kazgrim as he holds his great axe in place, caught in the corded arm of the storm fiend. He laughs as the creature struggles to break free, only to tear more flesh and release more blood. With one quick movement, the Slaughter Priest pulls the axe free, letting the arterial spray wash over him as he steps back and cries out to his wrathful god. Witness the glory I bring for you, and grant me strength, so I may honor you forevermore. Every mortal creature nearby could feel their souls split from their bodies momentarily, as a rift in reality is cleft to birth a giant blazing axe bearing the icon of corn. It screams through the air as it slams onto a storm fiend, severing both arm and leg. Its agony is drowned out by the fountain of blood that pours forth and the ensuing cacophony of chaos as the cornate warriors revel in the destruction. The wrathmongers of the Crimson Haze rush forwards to bathe in the bloodbath as the storm fiends batter them down. Wicked flails hammer down upon the storm fiends, crushing one of the skulls and snapping their spine in half. Another pair of flails wound around the great beast and obliterated the atrophied auxiliary brain on the creature's back. Gracier Veskit couldn't help but feel helpless as he watched the storm fiends begin to get surrounded and overwhelmed. He began to plan for his next step. His thoughts are interrupted though by the rapidly increasing sound of battle cries as more than a dozen half-naked, frenzied, axe-wielding murderers burst through the darkness. They moved with zealous speeds and had no sense of control or containment, only a lust for blood. Bodies slammed against the armored storm vermin protecting him. Several of these reckless brutes are cut down in their charge, but over top of their own dead they charged onwards. Their assault was relentless as they dove over the rusted halberds to drive their axes and knives into the flesh of the deep slayer retinue and claiming the lives of several storm vermin. Their skaven nature sends several of them into a shaken state, and they begin to look for a way to escape the seemingly losing battle, but Veskit Falfang is quick to bring them back into order. Fight, fight, and you may live, but run flee, and I will make sure you die, die. With his storm vermin protectors falling back into line, Veskit recites an incantation into his warp stone orb, as a plume of deadly green smog spouts forth and washes over the blood reavers. The mortals choke and gasp as they begin vomiting forth their innards. Boils and buboes develop like a fevered rash all over their bodies as they succumb to this magical plague. Several of these men turn craven at the sight of this and run, only to be cut down by the storm vermin or by their own kin. At the very forefront of the battle, the last standing storm fiend watches as the other two die under the battering attacks of the wrathmongers and decides to withdraw back to its own forces. But before it could return safely, the mighty axe of corn slams down upon it to cut the creature in half. Feeling that no worthy foe remained, the axe's baleful energies begin to dissipate and wane. 
Kasgrim breathed in the heavy scent of blood in the air and screamed an order. Release the Korgrath! In the distance, heavy chains are snapped as this crazed beast is unleashed. Its burning skull detects a stench of magic in the air and sets off like a bolt towards its quarry, hoping to devour the sorcerer's skull. Quilk watches the battle unfold intently. He eyes the weakened slaughter priest, as well as his diminished blood warriors, with cautious planning. If he could slay this worthy foe, his prestige would be elevated many fold. As the burning axe of corn begins to disappear from the battlefield, he orders his storm vermin to march steadily towards the foe, while he calls for a horde of plague monks to ravage the enemy flanks. He knows his cunning would be enough to break the enemy ranks, and the time was ripe for him to act. Kasgrim stands next to Kron as the Altar of Skulls looms above them. He is covered in his own blood, as well as the fetid blood of the storm fiends he had fought. Picking up a half-crushed skull of the rat beast, he crushes it in his massive hands and shouts to his forces. Blood for the Blood God! And in unison, they call back. Skulls for the Skull Throne! Just as quickly as the wrathful axe of corn disappears, it cleaves through reality once more. The burning axe head is only visible for a moment before it sunders the storm veteran around Croak. Dismembered limbs and heads fly through the air as blood sprays in every direction, causing a downpour of bloody rain. The two slaughter priests raise their arms towards the enemy battle line and begin to chant. The spilt blood on the ground coalesce and rush towards the scattered storm vermin and their leader. The tainted blood seeps into their wounds and pores and begins to heat up and overload their bodies. Jets of boiling blood erupt from their mouths and ears as their flesh burns around their orifices. Their screams are garbled by the rapidly coagulating blood in their throats. The blood vessels in Croak's eyes bursts and drowns his vision in a crimson red as his head throbs with excruciating pressure. Two blood warriors charged at the dazed claw lord, looking to claim his skull. But in his blood rage, he swings his wicked warp forge blade to cut the two men in half. But before they could die, their wild axe swings bash against Croak's helmet, sending him into a spasm and losing consciousness. Several lesser clan rats quickly pull the body of their leader away into the cover of darkness. The plague monks sent to flank the corn army witness the carnage unfold and are caught unaware by the wrathmongers of the Crimson Haze. With wide arcing swings of their many flails, a dozen plague monks are crushed in an instant by the berserker charge. Their poisonous blades strike back to kill a few of their assailants, but with the decimation of their numbers, the rattlings are quickly routed and flee from the rampaging warriors of corn. Elsewhere, Veskit screams in terror as his bodyguard retinue is slowly dispatched by the Blood Reavers, who look to him as their next target. His panic grows exponentially as the stomping footsteps of the Korgrath are heard rapidly approaching. Unfurling a warp storm scroll and reciting a quick incantation, he turns the remaining Blood Reavers into a withering green ash before he turns to run away. The Korgrath quickly catches up to him, but is stopped by two rat ogres who come to bar its way. As the monstrous broods begin to exchange blows, Veskit scampers away without even a thought of looking back. Whatever treasure laid buried here is not worth his life. The mining camp teemed with rats. Without leadership, it is utter chaos as they attempt to escape with their life. Kasgrim trotted through the masses, his axe, the gore shovel, singing with each shower of blood released. No matter how minute the amount, he and his warriors would shed every last drop of blood from the enemies, for the blood must always flow. Amongst the dying screams of the rat camp, several rats drag the unconscious body of their claw lord away into the comforting darkness of the shadows. Quick, quick, bring the Black Reaper back. He leads us to safety, yes, yes. One of the rats squeaks. In a dazed stupor from the hemorrhage in his head, Croak could hear faint whisperings into his furry ears. He mutters almost incoherently into the enveloping darkness. His bloodshot eyes shift in and out of focus as the shadows above him form into a fang-filled grin in the gloom. He cackles loudly as he dreams of far greater prospects in his future. Thank 
you for viewing our channel. If you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. We also have a Facebook page and Instagram accounts. Links are within the channel banner. Take care and happy wargaming.